Hi, I'm Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.5 RC has been out for a few days and iOS 17.4.1 has been out for about a month or so, but there's even more to talk about since the iOS 17.5 RC is out what's new video. And we'll talk about the overall experience, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video, there's over 12,000 votes and 160 comments. I've gone through every single comment to see if this version is ready, what it's like, and whether or not battery life is good or not. We'll talk about that and some of your comments a little bit later, but first let's talk a little bit about iOS 18 as that's what's coming next. Siri this week is said to be at the heart of the upcoming AI integrations of AI in general being incorporated into iOS 18. This is according to a recent New York times update where they said that they've heard that that's basically Apple rewriting Siri and making it an integral part with AI combined in the operating system itself. So that could be a major change using large language models, maybe some differences there. We don't know exactly what that entails, but we do know we'll get extra features. iOS 18 is also going to integrate audio transcription ability into notes and voice memos directly, according to Apple Insider. It makes sense since you can already sort of do this with FaceTime calls and other things with dictation, but integrating it more directly into the OS, whether you're taking a note or maybe even summarize notes or something like that a little bit later. So it looks like they're really pushing AI this time around what that means specifically. We don't know, but we're only about a month away or so. WhatsApp got a big interface update on iOS and Android. It has a new attachment tray and they actually posted about it on their website saying, keeping WhatsApp fresh, simple, and approachable. As we scroll down, you can see the new design on iOS and Android, and there's more about what's new in it with that new attachment tray sort of the look of it over the years on iOS all the way through the newest version. And so these are all about the latest update. So that's great that they keep updating it. And I know many people around the world use this. Not many people in the United States where I'm at, unless you're talking to someone overseas, but it's a really nice app that keeps getting a lot of updates. Apple this week, of course, showed off the new iPad Pro and iPad Air models, along with the new Apple Pencil Pro. And if we go to the website, you can see that here with iPad Air, iPad Pro, and there's some incredible specs here as well. However, it's meant to be a sort of a creativity device crammed into one super thin device. And Apple did an advertisement where they crushed a bunch of instruments, paint and more to visualize this, but then got a lot of backlash for it. So Apple later apologized saying that the ad missed the mark. In fact, they said creativity is in our DNA at Apple, and it's incredibly important for us to make products that empower creatives all over the world. Our goal is to always celebrate the myriad of ways users express themselves and bring their ideas through the iPad. We missed the mark with this video and we're sorry. So that's something that they've apologized for. However, if we go on YouTube on Apple's channel, the ad is still there with 2.2 million views. It's called crush. So you can see it here if you want to take a look at it and it's still available. Now, early tests of the new M4 and the new iPad pro are proving to be pretty fast, about 25% faster than the M3. So that's something that Apple really seems to maybe have gotten right this time. However, all of that power may not do a whole lot if you don't have a lot of apps. Of course, we're getting updated versions of Final Cut and Logic Pro, so I can't wait to try those out, but it looks like an incredible device and it launches Wednesday. So once I get my hands on one, of course I'll have unboxings. We'll take a look at it and do comparisons and more. Now with the latest couple of versions of iPhones, we got an always on display. However, some people are pretty disappointed that the new iPad pro models don't support that. Now I don't really mind that except it would be nice to have it on a dock. Some people have rumored that maybe a home pod dock with an iPad built in would be coming in the future. So maybe something along those lines would be really nice. But at this point, I'm not sure what it would be useful for, but I would love to see it updated as an additional feature feature in iPad OS 18, maybe some other features that really utilize that M4 hardware as well. Now with iOS 17.5 this week, we know about all the features that are in it. However, Apple has not mentioned a single thing about the alarm clock bug. So whether or not that's actually fixed in 17.5, maybe we'll find out on Monday or maybe sometime this coming week. But so far in their notes, whether it's here on the Apple update page here in your iPhone, or whether that's on Apple's release notes or even their security update webpage, they haven't said a thing. So hopefully we'll get a fix for that. But with iOS 17.5 RC, I haven't had an issue with the alarm clock going off, thankfully. Now we know about a bunch of new features in iOS 17.5, and this is turning out to be a decent update, but nothing revolutionary. Typically this late in the game, 
we're really waiting for the next version to show all the new features. So we should have some battery health for the latest iPads. Of course, once I get my hands on that, I'll check that out, but it looks like it's in the code of iPad OS 17.5, where we could go into our battery health settings, go in, take a look. We'll have our battery health and sort of overall cycle counts. We could get that in the next version, or maybe it's included once we unbox it. We don't really know, but it looks like it's in the code. Of course, we have new wallpaper in this update, side loading via the web for the EU. We have new puzzles in the news app. If you're a news plus subscriber, you have a new puzzle here called quartiles, some new features and options to go along with that. And we also have a new repair mode that's built in. Also, if you go into your find my and try and delete a device. We have a little reading tracker that's built into the books app. And then also the podcast widget gets updated. I've shown this before where it will change to whatever you're listening to. It will change to the album artwork and sort of match that. So you'll see it just changed there and it matches. We also have updates to the weather widget where they've changed the font size spotlight search changes where we search for podcasts and it actually shows the most recent played ones. There's emoji changes, privacy and security changes, and of course, security changes we'll see a little bit later after it launches to the public. We still don't have the stopwatch live activity or the share play feature for HomePod and Apple TV. So maybe that will be with iOS 17.6 betas. We don't really know. Now we're about a month away or so from WWDC 2024. That's where we expect all of the major updates. And of course it's incredible that it's only about a month or so away. So if we go into the calendar, wherever I put it here, you'll see that we're only about a month or so away from the 10th of June. That day we expect Apple to have a keynote show off iOS 18, iPad OS 18, watch OS 11, and maybe some surprises with vision OS 2.0 or something else. We don't really know but that should be a pretty big day. And then right after that event, of course, we'll get the first beta of iOS 18. So iOS 18 beta one, and then we'll get to try those out for ourselves. Now, until then we could see iOS 17.6, of course, but we're waiting for the release of iOS 17.5. Most likely that will be on Monday or Tuesday based on what we've seen in the past. That makes a lot of sense since the iPads come out on Wednesday and then we'll move on to iOS 16, like I said. So we should see that Monday or Tuesday along with watch OS and all the other updates with Mac OS and more. We never did get an iOS 17.4.2. So it looks like Apple's going to skip that altogether and push everything into iOS 17.5. Now, as far as the overall experience with 17.5, well, this time around with the RC, it's smoother with less stutters. Most people report that it's very smooth, just scrolling through different things. And that includes older devices as well with the iPhone 11 here. So if we go into music, give it a second to load. There we are. We're on the home page. Just scroll. Things are nice and smooth. Just swiping between pages, going into maybe a folder, going back out. Everything's working as you would expect. So that's great. I've had no lockups this time around and airdrop is also working very fast. In fact, if I try and send this, we'll send this over to a different device. If I airdrop over to the iPhone 11, it takes just a second. It recognizes it and it's there immediately before it was quite delayed. And if I send this to the 14 pro max that I have over there, it's delayed as well as that has beta four on it. Now squared notifications seem to have gone away. So that's a good sign. Let me close out the podcast app here and the squared notifications are gone. So that's great. It's working properly. Everything's working as you would expect there, but there are still some issues with it. I had a lot of issues this week with connectivity and cellular and Wi-Fi. It would jump off of Wi-Fi for no reason, switch over to cellular. Then I'd go to Safari, try and load something and it would do nothing. It just wouldn't work. So it didn't work for me again today. It heated up a lot when it was trying to find signal or connected and just not loading. I rebooted the phone this afternoon and it fixed the issue. So that's definitely still an issue. Another issue is that standby bug. So with this anchor dock here, if I place the phone on it, we'll go into standby mode, give it a second. It should switch on. There we are. And we can scroll through no problem, but if we press and hold, nothing happens. I've reported it in the feedback app so far. I haven't heard anything back, but hopefully they fix this very soon. Once you've edited it once, you can't edit it again. Also, I've had issues, like I said, with overheating today, but that was only one instance where it just got really hot for no reason while I was using Safari, just trying to look at a web page. 
Contact posters are not working for some. Sometimes they come in blank and CarPlay is still not working for some people. I had issues with beta four with it, but with the RC, it's been completely fixed for me, but I've seen some people say it doesn't work at all for them. And I don't know what vehicle specifically, but I believe it was Honda, possibly BMW as well. So definitely a few bugs still there. Of course, we still have a ton of bugs with iOS 17.4.1. The longer we've had it, the more buggy and worse it seems to have been sort of carrying on and getting more and more bugs. And so far, it seems we've got camera crashes when zooming into video, micro stuttering, issues with the battery, keyboard lag, AirPods connectivity issues, and some still have the volume bug. Thankfully, most of those things are fixed in iOS 17.5. As far as the camera goes, well, let's go ahead and take a look at a few photos here. It seems like it's performing pretty well. I did have a little bit of an issue trying to focus on the flower at first, but then I switched to macro mode and it worked fine. Otherwise, it's working great as far as the camera goes, and I have no complaints about that. That wallpaper dimming bug seems to have returned for me as well. So if we clear this out, take a look down here sort of desaturates as I swipe up. It's not a huge deal, but it's definitely still there. Performance and heat. Well, I mentioned performance a little bit earlier. It's still nice and smooth. No issues to report there, but heat, like I said, it's been a little odd for me today. It was very hot before it wasn't. So let's go ahead and take a look at the thermal camera with iOS 17.5 RC. We're at about 32.8 or 33 degrees Celsius. On 17.4.1, where it was sitting idle, we're at about 29.5 degrees Celsius. With iOS 17.5 RC, we're at about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. And on 17.4.1, we're at about 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So, okay overall, but again, a little bit warmer on 17.5 with the RC, but then it went away after a reboot. So if you are having issues, reboot it and see if that fixes it. Now with Geekbench scores, those seem to be okay, but I did have to run it three times to get a pretty good score. You'll see I had 2,897 for single core, 7,155 for multi-core. If we go back and take a look at the history, I ran it three times today and it did improve after I ran it the other day in both single and multi-core. So it is a little bit better. I would expect it to perform pretty great. It's doing well for most people that report that. Most people have no issues with it, but we do have some issues with battery life. In fact, I have some issues myself with the battery life. And if we go into battery health, you'll see I'm down to 98% with 182 cycles. And if we take a look at the last 10 days today, it used a lot of power backing up, even though I wasn't on connected to really Wi-Fi or a plug, it's decided to back up. But the previous day I had three hours and 49 minutes of screen active time, one hour and one minute of screen idle time and used 75% of my battery battery life for me on 17.5 RC has been pretty poor. Beta three was great. Beta four was a little worse. And so far the RC is worse than that. However, some people report it's much, much better for them. So it really just depends who they are. But for me, it hasn't been great. And the same is true on the iPad. You'll see it was last charged this morning at 8.41 a.m. And we're at three hours and 29 minutes yesterday. And usually I'm getting about five or six hours of screen on time. So it's not great. Today I'm down to 87% and I've used it one hour and 11 minutes. So overall... It's okay on the iPad, but not great. It's not great at all for me on the iPhone. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.5 RC, if you're already on one of the betas, I definitely would if you haven't already. If you're on iOS 17.4.1, I probably would hold off as I think Apple will push a different build number once they release it to the public. We don't know that 100%, but I think that seems likely since we didn't have an iOS 17.5 RC2. So that hopefully will get a little bit of an update with additional bug fixes. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what you had to say about it. Matt Raynor 0611 said on iOS 17.5 RC on my iPhone 14 pro max battery is good. I can easily get through a day. No problem. Micro stuttering every once in a while. Other than that, good update. Raj SKRG said I'm on iOS 17.5 RC device 14 pro max works really great. Battery is also better compared to 17.4.1. Also, I observed that the heating of the device is reduced under normal environmental factors didn't check in the sunlight yet. So far, very good experience. Hashtag daily said 17.5 RC running great on my iPhone 13 pro battery 
battery life and performance has been great for me. BY and IU2 said 17.5 RC here. Great job, Apple. Finally, Scott Hagel 3254 said 17.5 RC is running great on my iPhone 12 Pro. I have smooth, snappy performance, good Wi Fi and cellular connectivity, and great battery life. Looks like 17.5 is ready for general release. Joshua Sagi said, I'm on 17.5 RC on the 15 Pro Max. Originally, I had some issues with the phone heating up, but now everything seems to work fine. Battery life is good and connectivity is also great. Belly81 said, I installed iOS 17.5 RC on my iPhone 13 Pro, and so far the battery performance has been poor. I'm getting four to five hours screen on time, and my battery health is at 86%. My phone used to drain 10% every 120 minutes. Now it drains about 24% in 120 minutes. So that's everything with iOS 17.5 RC, and this should be the last time iOS 17.4.1 is the current public release. If you found any other features or changes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And also if you ordered one of those new iPad Pro, iPad Air, or the Apple Pencil Pro, I'd love to hear from you as well, and which model you got. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed, already please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching this is aaron i'll see you next time